welcome back. So we are starting off with a 30 ounce twisted something like that. Um, it's got this bigger lid on it and it twists closed. But anyways, um, I got it from the stainless steel depot and I just painted it gold, half gold and half white. Now I'm not trying to do an ombre here. We are just going to put a, some epoxy on here and glitter it in half, half white and half gold, because my end goal is for it to be a baseball on top and, or baseball looking white on the top, and then a bat with the wood grain kind of look on the bottom. So let's get started. Right after I painted this, I put on some epoxy and then we're going to get into glittering. Of course, I let the paint dry, but anyways. After it came off my heater, it was nice and hot, so that epoxy just goes on smooth. So the glitters we're using here are uh, Radioactive from Radioactive Glitters. It's one of my absolute favorite whites. And then I'm also using a uh, glitter bar mix from the Wildflower Glitter Co. I designed this to be kind of like a, a brown, but a pretty brown, so that I could do this bat look uh, where it was wood but not wood because I had just done a wood grain bat on the bottom and then like some baseball look on the top for a coach for a male coach and then I had a baseball mom wanting to have something and I was like you know I want to do the bat look but I want to make sure that it you know reads more feminine than just the wood grain so I am just like I was saying before I'm just doing half of the cup in this radioactive white and then I'm going to take the other half and use this custom mix that I made to fill in on the bottom now I wasn't too concerned about it being you know exactly like I, I didn't care if it was a little bit rounded on certain areas because I was gonna fill that area with like late a lace look uh, baseball laces and so it you know they they wind around the ball so I, I was kind of like giving myself a pass on that we were going to go real um, authentic and natural on this so no need to be completely accurate so once I covered it in all of those chunky glitters I took some glitter from the glitter ranch this is similar it's one of my absolute favorite whites it has um kind of this holographicness to it but but it's not I don't know I can't explain it it's so pretty but I love filling it in when I really want a white to pop and so um and this glitter is like real kind of white and mirror so I wanted a little bit of something else in there and so it worked out perfect and then I'm going in with vacay which is a fine like champagne -y gold color which I knew would be perfect to mix with that custom mix that I had made and so I was just filling in making sure that it really had that kind of batty brown look to it but not you know too brown but yeah like I said feminine more feminine now this is the uh, you'll probably want to take a screenshot this is what I came up with and I gave them a little bit of free in case they thought the fine would be better than the rose gold blend because sometimes when they get when you know they can kind of make a decision when they're looking at it in person so I always kind of add a little bit of notes in there um, anyways love the the wildflower glitter co glitter bar stuff it's just so neat to kind of design your own glitter so anyways I just took my parchment paper there and just patted it down used my glove patted all that down it just helps immensely in the end whenever you're trying to epoxy this and you just have shards of glitter just sticking out everywhere so this is like crucial to your sanity later when you're trying to sand all that off after um, I did that I covered this in polycrylic like I do everything else I covered it gave a, a good solid seal on that glitter because I didn't want it to move I didn't want any of that brown to get in the white for sure so I was going to do the white first and then go into the brown but this is the first of two coats of epoxy that I'm going to do sorry our electricity just came back on and so now our ring is working and <laughs> 
So it's letting me know that someone's at my door. Anyways, I put two coats of epoxy on this uh, this coat and then I just went right into a second coat before I do any of my sanding or any prep or anything like that and like I said this is my second coat and so after this coat cures we would be ready for all of our sanding and decaling so per the norm always clean everything with alcohol before I start putting on any kind of decals it just ensures that the uh, vinyl is going to stick to it and I've never you know haven't had too many problems with that always just make sure you get any of the sanding off clean it wash it whatever um, so I designed this baseball mom uh, decal here I designed it for um, and I will add it to my Facebook group so if you want it you can go and grab it and this is you know I put it together worded it I mean everything uh, all the letters and everything like that I put together so it is hand lettered by me so enjoy use it hopefully you'll have uh, this will be good for the new season coming up of baseball Texas here we have baseball all year round pretty much so um, right now there's a baseball mom she's like I need a cup for baseball I said I can do it so here it is and this is a circle chevron uh, monogram that I got from Makers Gonna Learn. And I just thought it would be, it would be cool to add it, you know, the, the detail of the chevron with the baseball, you know, laces and that kind of thing. So that's where I did that. But it could be, you could just make these just straight out, no, um, you know, personalization and sell these probably just like this, but, um, definitely wanted, she wanted something to claim it as her own. So that's what we did. And as usual, I am doing the bottom, uh, offset on first, and then I'm going in with the, uh, you know, top part there. And I wanted the red to be on the bottom here because of the mom part has the baseball, you know, laces. And so I wanted that red to be kind of popping up from underneath. So it worked out perfect. And what I was doing there was making sure that I was on the exact opposite side. So whenever you're, I, you know, I took, took it and looked at it like this and then flipped it down so that I could be, you know, opposite, you know, proportionate from one side to the other. So here's where I get into the fun stuff. So I found this wood grain look on, um, it was like a SVG and I found it on Creative Fabrica. Now I just cut this out on this frosted brown glitter that I got from CSDS Vinyl and I will definitely link it down below. It's a place local to my house but they actually have a really good website and you can order from them and get points and all of that. So I'm so happy to be able to find them and be able to provide a place for you to actually get the products that I'm using. Um, cause I, the other store I go to has the same stuff, but this store actually has a decent website and cheap, uh, shipping, you know, shipping's free over a certain amount, that kind of thing. So I'm very happy to have found them. So anyways, that's available there. So I just cut this out just, just like a, as, as, SVG or whatever. I, I will say that I did this all and I thought, oh, I could just wrap it all around. No, the curve. No, it's not. It is not going to work on the curve like that. So I would suggest cutting this into sections and pieces because I had to do a lot of maneuvering and pulling up um, pieces. I mean, it's a wood grain like it's supposed to be kind of natural. So I wasn't too concerned with, you know, things being off set or that kind of thing. But it was um, a little more uh, tedious in that I had to pick pieces up and reposition them and set them back down and cut them and place them. Um, and I probably, if I would have just kind of cut this up into like little sections, I probably would have been, it would have been a little bit better. And I would cut it a tiny bit bigger because the way that it wraps around, you are going to have a little bit of altering to the design of the wood grain. So you needed a few, I wish I would have had a few more like lines and things to kind of add and give dimension where the, uh, you know, wood would have been and that kind of thing. So just 
heed me, heed my caution on this, but it worked. It came out perfect. I'm not, you know, complaining about that. It's just, I would cut it up into pieces and I would make it just a little bit bigger. So you'd have a little bit extra to work with. So I just continued to kind of work my way around it. Um, and at that point I was trying to keep it on the, um, uh, in line because I knew I only had a certain amount going around. So like I said, if you made it a little bit wider and was able to cut it and cut it and cut it, then you could kind of like, oh, okay, I need a little stripe here, or a little curve here or whatever. Uh, and it would have worked out, you know, better. But like I said, it's all natural in the look of this wood grain. So just make it what you want. Um, take your time. Don't freak out. It, it will work. It will definitely work. Plus, this vinyl is very forgiving. It, it will stretch and pull and um, let you do whatever you need to on this curve or anything else. So I, I absolutely love this frosted vinyl. And eventually, like I said, I, well, I sped this up now because you pretty much get the point. But, um, but this is when I was like cutting all the little pieces off and realizing that I was like, okay, I'm going to need a little bit more. I'm going to try to maneuver this around. And so just ended up kind of stripping up some of the the lines and kind of moving them over and maneuvering them to look the right, you know, to give me that right wood grain look. So once again, make it a little wider, cut it up in strips and you'll be good to go. And after I, you know, had stretched some things out and, you know, moved them over and that kind of thing, I had to go back and kind of cut them to, they were a little bit too far up you know I wanted them to kind of be on the same plane if you will all the way around so that's what I did there so here I used a clear vinyl um, print that I had already I had printed off a few of them when I made the other guy coach cup and so I was like oh, I'll just use this for this so then that way they could kind of translate from guy to girl and it would be the same lacing through the um, cup, but I, I would suggest making sure that you get your Cricut to cut this and cut all those little clear pieces that were kind of sticking in between each one. I will add this below. It's come from Creative Fabrica, but, um, other than that, it's just works just like water slide. I ended up adding a few more laces on the side of the cup there. And, um, just to kind of divide the baseball mom and then the monogram, it just, I had extra, and so I was like, I'm just going to throw it on here. <laughs> so I ended up adding a little bit more to it, but I really love the way it is so feminine, but yet baseball, because it just has that sparkle that is underneath there that comes through. And so I'm very pleased with this. If you um, go join my group, this decal will be there, um, and all the information will be down below, all the links. Um, you know, discounts for Glitter Ranch, all of that. Please subscribe, please comment, and I will see you next time. Bye.